sailors and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. In jeder Stunde, an jedem Tag, Sieg Freude! I'm back for part four of this grenade, uh, of Blender grenade modeling tutorial. Of part four of the grenade, Blender's grenade modeling tutorial. So, last where we start left off, we got in this thing done, right here, which is this entire grenade, completely finished, right here. That's last where we left off. So now what we're going to do is, you're right, we're going to start doing what we so call the grenade handle right here. So excuse me, let me pause this for a second to get the right video. Uh, sorry about that. So now I'm back. I was just getting all my images ready for, for, for modeling. So what we're going to do is, these are some of the reference images. So we're going to base our reference image off of this, or actually better, we're going to base it off of this. So this is what we need to try to do. So we need to try to go into here and try to design the pin. For this so what I'm probably gonna do is you're right is gonna go top like this place that there and you're right start placing your right um, a Taurus and try to you're right going into here So that's how I want it, like this. We can definitely work with that. Probably a little bit like lower, like this. Zero, A. That was, oh, oops, that was my next tutorial I was working on. So you're right. We're going to go into here. B. Go duplicate. Separate selection. I'm actually going to go into here. Again. And you're right, I'm just going to hit, you're right, the snap key and snap towards
And that's what I just want to make right there. So you're right, we would make that piece that goes right about there. Right there, I would say. And you're right, just go into here. Just go into here, remove doubles right there. Face, inset, inset right there, inset. And just go into here and just go poke face like that. And that's how I would make you write the, the, the actual, that's one way you can actually do to make something like this, I would say. Another way you can do it, which I'm gonna show you another way which I, I saw it out there. So if you take this right here, and you're right, you go into here and go solidify right here. And actually increase the radius like that. Yeah, but uh, so okay. So there's another way you can do it. So if you go into here and go into you right curve Bezier circle like this, and let's say you actually go into solidify like that, or at least go into one of these objects, which is the geometry window. You could basically, there's a certain function where you can actually transmit, like, let's say, an actual mesh object toward this. So if you go into here, I think it's here somewhere. I think it's here somewhere. It's like under like 2D or 3D. Like if you hit extrude like this or depth like this, like the depth function like that, you can actually basically animate like a circle somehow. Somewhere right here, I think, if I'm not wrong. So 
Somewhere right here, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, like if, if you were to go into here, which I'm trying to make this as fast, we have enough time for this so far. So yeah, so if we were to go into here and go into this function right here, we take the circle, we go CTRC, CTRC right there. And let's say we take this function right here. And you're right, we just go into here, the taper function. Which just can only work on a Bezier curve. So if we were to go into here, go into here, like that, or you right here. We could go into here and start like actually going into here and scale that down like that. And from right there, you're right. You you would get the same piece right here already animated. And what you would do, you're right, is you lower down the preview to there, I think. Like, if you wanted to, you can actually increase the geometry like that. And that's it. You got a simple previewed item right there ready to be used. And this is what you can do. So you're right. You would take this and you, you're right. You would kind of render this out and render it out the circle right there. And there's another function right here. I think if I'm not wrong... There's a function that's called skew, which if you were to go into here and go rotate this along the x-axis, like that, this is what we call a function called skew. And you're right, you would... kind of go into here in a way and you're right like kind of bring down the
So if you go into offset like this, if you play around with the function, you can get something like this. And you're right, you would just go scale like this. So like that. Like that. And you write bring up the steps like that. Like that pretty much. And you write like bring this like this. And you're right, you would you would kind of increase the amount like this. Like that to around So I'm trying to look at that. So around four hundred. So five twenty. So if you increase it, you're right to like over f 540. This is the, the entire type of amount that you'll get right here. And then you're right, you would just kind of just go into here and just play around with the settings itself right there. It's one way of getting down this thing right there. So this is one tutorial of getting that thing done. So I just wanted to show you a, a very quick, easy way. So this is what we call, you're right, the, the skew modifier right here. And then what we would do is you just kind of play around with the settings. And that's it. We go into here and we just hit like apply. And this is a fully geometry item right here, pretty much ready to be used, pretty much. So you're right, we would get the final settings. And And that's one way you can literally do it. One, one sophisticated way you can do it, basically. So when you hit solid, that's what the item looks like. It looks exactly like this, in a way, ready to be used. And then you, you write, you would go into solidify like this. I should just want to go see this. Which this is better in geometry. I would say, so I would kind of use this instead. And I'm just gonna actually send that to, to geometry, like that. But that's one way you can do it. And then what we would do right here is, we're gonna take this top piece right here 
we're going to take that one piece right there. And you're right, we're, we're, we're going to actually put a cursor to selected right there. Cursor to selected, go duplicate, scale. So that's what I want. And you're right, I'm just going to go into here. And... I'm just going to go into here, skew. So I'm just going to go in here. Zero. Snapping off. And you're right, just going to go into here.
like that. And you're right, I'm just going to hit apply like there. Cursor to selected. I'm just going to here and go cursor. Rotate this. Rotate this. Y. 90. Rotate Y. 90. Like that. Scale it down like that. So the right size I'm going to get right there. And I'm sorry if it's taken too a little bit long, but bear with me. And you're right, I'm just going to put cursor to selected. And just go cursor offset right there. Scale that down right about there. A little bit like that.
So I'm just going to place that right there because we need to get that to be a certain size like this. So we need that to be a lot larger like this, I would say. So you write that would need to go, you write in here. goes in there. Let me go in here. So that's the way we're going to have it, where it kind of touches that thing right there. I'm just going to go CTR normal. So that's, that's the pin that we did so far. So that's one method of you write sophisticatedly doing the pin. So when we go into here and we, you write, we would hit like here and you write delete dot. And that's one very, very highly sophisticated method of doing the pin. So we're done the pin on that thing itself. So what we need to do is we need to start doing, you're right, the, the whole piece that goes right here. And it's going to go duplicate. Extrude. Face. So that's what we have so far ready to be used.
right, I'm just going to go scale that down like that. And this is the, you're right, the reference image that we're going to use. So we're going to use this and we're going to try to extrude that pin right out. So I'm just going to do this very fast, extrude. Extrude. That's what I have right there, ready to be made. Like that. Just something very fast. Go duplicate. Rotate. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, pretty much. I mean, I might just go into here and, you know, like, kind of take this. Go B right here. go like that and you're right the actual thing is already done it's it's fully completed itself so that rate you're right we would go into here and we could probably go ctr join and since this is a small object we would go into here and go smooth right there so the very last piece, you're right, we're going to work on on this, you're right, is we're going to work on this piece. And this is the very, very last piece that we're going to work on. And on a grenade, we, we want to try to do kind of this bending piece right here to add a little de depth into it. Just go rotate this, rotate it like, like,
So we do that little kick right there. So that's what I did. I selected the areas and I readjusted them a little bit like this. So I deselected this edge right here and that edge right there. Then I just hit loft or bridge. One of those two you can hit right there and it does the job. So at the end of the day, when we go in into here and go Alt H and unhide everything, yeah, it's already pretty much done like that. Pretty much. 
like that pretty much. And it looks perfectly aligned. You don't even notice the difference between this and this. But at the end of the day, yeah, it looks like this. And the job is already done very, very well, basically with this. Perfectly smoothed object, perfectly rendered grenade. And I guess that's it. So you're right, we would go in here and go into camera view, lock camera view. And this is what we call, you're right, the grenade. Go into cursor to select it and do a final render, cursor to center. You're right, add a plane. Scale that up like that. First of all, I'm just going to save that. So we're going to duplicate that. And we're just going to go into here. Scale that down. Gonna go sunlight. Okay, so you're right, we're gonna go into here.
So that's it, and then we're just going to go into Cycles Render, I would say, and go into here, and just render that bad boy right there. And I'm just going to times the size of this, which is going to be like over 380, around 380 and 340. So 3,840 3, right there for that. Then that would be 2,160. 2,116. I'm actually doing the math. So one time one of my YouTube followers said that I can't believe you do not know how to add or subtract or do math. And, and, and they're saying I do not know how to do math. And yet I actually added up at least basically it, it, like a large number like this. Very, very fast and efficient. So when you get a lot of YouTube followers, and if you're ever a YouTube YouTuber, you're going to get a lot of negative comments at the end of the day. Definitely a lot of negative comments. So we're just going to hit like F12, or just like just render just still image right there. So we end, render that image right at that rate. And you're right, this is a very, very fast, efficient way. So I'm probably going to end up pausing this until the render is fully done and show you the final result and then save the render because this is going to be the final render result when I'm going to be adding, you right, the actual actual image to the, when I finish working out the actual video itself. So I'm actually going to end up pausing this right now. So I'm actually done basically, you right, the render and this is what the final result is. So I'm just going to go into here. And you're right, just like go and save that in there as a final result. So World War II Grenade Render 1, and this is a final result. And that's what the final version of, you're right, the rendering looks like. So I'm trying to get this rendering. Which is taking a little bit of time. So I'm trying to think, should I pause it? I think I'm going to pause it first and wait till it's fully saved and then get back with you guys. So I'm actually back. So this is what the final render result actually looks like. So it looks exactly like this. Which is a very, very beautiful rendered grenade. It looks exactly like the actual image itself. Almost quite, but... I would say to a certain degree, it looks very, very well done for a render, for example. Well done for a render itself. Minus maybe not really 100% accurate, but I, I still think it looks very, very good. But at the end of the day, that's how you write, you would do, you write a sophisticated World War II grenade render. And this is how you write, you do a sophisticated, you write World War II grenade render itself and in rendering the grenade so i hope you like my tutorial i hope i helped you out a whole lot please subscribe and give me like give me likes if you want give me likes if i would really appreciate it and i guess that's it for this tutorial of part three of the world war ii grenade modeling tutorial blender modeling tutorial so 
That's how you model the final result of a World War II grenade. So, thank you, goodbye, and thanks for watching my tutorial. Thank you, goodbye. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. Thank you.